Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirikoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm talking about my 2QB and Superflex draft strategies for the 2022 fantasy football season. Now many of you guys this offseason over the last couple weeks have reached out asking Andrew, are you going to continue your annual series of talking about this league format? And obviously the answer is yes, but the reason why I always want to talk about 2QB and Superflex leagues is because it's the main league I play in and it's the most competitive fantasy format in the entire landscape. And the reason why I think this is the case is because if you play in a regular 12-team league, obviously every single team in that league has to start two quarterbacks and every team wants to have three quarterbacks on roster. So if in case an injury or a bye week is to arise, you have another player to step and fill into that position. But when you're playing in a 12-team league, we have to remember there are only 32 starting quarterbacks in the National Football League. Therefore, four teams out of the 12 are not going to have a third quarterback, which means two of their first 14 weeks in which they're trying to win and earn a playoff spot are in jeopardy because in two of those weeks, they will not have a second quarterback in the starting role. And if that's going to be the case, you would be at a distinct disadvantage going against the team in which they did have two starting quarterbacks, regardless of whether it is a four point or six point per passing touchdown format. Though that may seem unfair, we all have to take into account the fact that every team has an opportunity during their draft to address their positional need. If you want to have a third quarterback on roster, you must draft it as such. But adding an extra quarterback into your starting lineup also makes it extremely competitive because the waiver wire becomes that much thinner. You will no longer be able to sit back, draft a quarterback in the eighth round, and still guarantee yourself a top 12 quarterback at the position. In fact, the top 12 quarterbacks in a super flex 2QB league are typically all gone by the first two rounds of your draft. When you get to the regular season after your draft, the waiver wire priority, people will hold their number one priority in order to use it on a quarterback. They'll use majority of their fab in order to pick up a quarterback to ensure that they're picking up a backup in case an injury took place or to prevent other teams in your league from getting those players. When you add more strategies, more nuance to the game of fantasy football, and you use the entire quarterback position as a whole to its maximum capacity, it makes it that much more difficult to win on a weekly basis. It makes it that much more vital to understand what you're doing in order to accomplish a successful season. So that's what we're gonna talk about on today's episode. Before we get into that, let me remind all of you guys, if you are trying to get my 2022 fantasy football draft rankings, one of the ways of doing so is signing up via Underdog Fantasy. Down in the description of the video, there is a link to Underdog Fantasy. If you travel there and use promo code Andrew today while making a first time deposit, not only will you have the ability to draft in the multitude of underdog best ball tournaments that they have going on right now, but you'll also be given in a direct email from me probably the day after with my 2022 fantasy football draft rankings for a half and full PPR scoring format. Again, those rankings are by tier at the quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, of course, kicker and defensive positions, which include my top 200 flex rankings. Those will be updated once a week for the entirety of August so that you are ready to go regardless of when you're drafting. I typically update that and send it in your direction every Saturday. So expect to see that email. Otherwise, the first time you sign up a day after, that email will be sent towards you regardless of what day of the week it is. Just trying to help you guys out. And of course, get you excited about the upcoming best ball tournaments that Underdog has to offer. You gain more experience by getting in there, drafting against other teams, testing out the different strategies we've talked about this offseason, and giving yourself a chance to win some prizes in their big tournaments. Anyway, if you haven't checked that out already, be sure to do so today. Use promo code Andrew. Thank you very much. Also, final thing I want to remind you guys, if you have not yet already, we're making fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2022 season. So be sure to subscribe. Help us get to our goal of 60,000 subscribers. Hopefully we can continue to grow the community from 60 to 70, 80K, all the way to 100 by the end of this season. So be sure to subscribe today and help yourself win a 2022 fantasy football championship with the daily content we produce here on the channel. With all of that covered, let's go ahead and let's transition to the primary topic of today's episode. It's talking about draft strategies in regards to 2QB or super flex leagues. Again, all of us know how competitive it is. All of us know that when you get more quarterbacks into the conversation, it becomes that much more difficult to win on a weekly basis, especially considering the increased value of said quarterback position. Now, 
on screen to the right of me, we have the quarterback drop-off in production. Again, we have referenced the drop-off in production in prior videos regarding the other three primary starting positions in fantasy football, which would be running back, wide receiver, and tight end. And we've compared them as such in order to give us an idea as to what kind of value we're missing out on when we're taking later running backs in comparison to wide receivers and why we want to prioritize early tight ends. But when we isolate the quarterback position as a whole, over the course of the last five seasons, I've averaged out in a four point per passing touchdown format, the top 24 overall quarterbacks in fantasy football and how many points they put up over the course of the last five years on average. Now, when we look at Josh Allen over the last two years in a four point per passing touchdown format, he put up 402.58 and 395.06. Kind of giving you a baseline as to what the number one quarterback has been in the last couple seasons and why that average currently sits there. That being said, we can see that there is a distinct drop-off in production in a four-point per passing touchdown league that really does give you an incentive for drafting early quarterbacks. There's a reason why in a normal super flex or two QB league, in the first 12 picks of a draft, seven quarterbacks typically come off the board. At the end of the second round, the first 12 to 13 quarterbacks are gone. You get to the third round, the top 16 to 17 are gone. The quarterback position dissolves relatively quickly. Again, the stats to my right are there to demonstrate the idea of that drop-off in production and to give you guys a little bit of an understanding as to why we continue to prioritize drafting quarterbacks as early as we do in these specific formats. Because the difference between Josh Allen coming off the board at the 1.01 position in comparison to for example, Kirk Cousins, who has typically been the number 12 to 13 quarterback over the last couple of years, is over 120 fantasy points on average. Obviously, that's a big deal. And if you're going to separate values as such, then you're going to have to you know, address that quarterback need early before you end up later down the draft board, ignoring that position and perhaps getting yourself in a little bit of trouble. But for those of you who are a little bit more hardcore and play in a six-point per passing touchdown league, uh, this was the drop-off in production after I calculated it over the last five years from 2017 through 2021. Obviously, Josh Allen's overall totals in the last couple seasons and the drop-off as such. Again, it gets even more hardcore when we're talking about the top-tier quarterback position. If we're talking about a Josh Allen who not only is going to benefit from the rushing ability, but also is still throwing 35-plus touchdowns a year, there's going to be a huge difference. But how do we level that difference out? And regardless of where we're selecting, find success, in a 2QB Superflex draft strategy. All right, well, I'm glad I asked that question because that's exactly what I'm gonna be answering and hopefully that was something that you had in mind. Let's talk about one of the strategies that I have used over the last couple of years. One of the few that we're going to be specifically mentioning and I'll be giving you a bit of an overview in terms of how to execute it and why you want to use this strategy. Okay, the first one is the two quarterback start. Now. This doesn't specifically mean you were drafting quarterback back to back in the first and second rounds. This is similar to my early round draft strategy video in which I'm talking about taking two running backs in the first three rounds. This is the same concept. You want to take two quarterbacks in your first three rounds of a draft, regardless of order, whether you are starting, uh, you know, running back in the first and following with two quarterbacks or uh, splitting it going QB, RB, QB, doesn't matter. As long as you are securing two quarterbacks within your first three rounds, that is the two QB start. Now, where I find this draft strategy is most successful is typically at the ends of draft. If you're drafting from 1.01, 1, the first pick, to the fourth pick, 1.04, I think this is a relatively safe strategy to roll with. And I'll explain to you why. If, in fact, you're the number one overall pick. You take Josh Allen, for example. The draft goes down and comes back. 24 selections have been made prior to your second round pick. You have two back-to-back -back selections, the last pick of the second round and the first pick of the third round. If you do not address another quarterback selection there, you are at the mercy of your league mates in terms of the draft going down and coming back again. And by the time the fourth round arrives, there is a very good chance that the quarterback position has all but dissolved and that 20 of them are off the board, and the next best available quarterback to select as your quarterback too is Jared Goff or Carson Wentz. I've personally experienced it, I've seen it happen, and it's not fun when it does. So, if I'm sitting at the 1.01 position, for example, I would take Josh Allen. The draft comes back to me in the second round, I probably take the 12th to 13th best quarterback available, in a you know six point per passing touchdown format i'm perfectly fine having kirk cousins there he's not a sexy name in general but in a six point per passing touchdown format the guy was the number nine quarterback overall last year and then to close out 
the turn there on the 2-3, I would address a positional need. I've gone ahead and I've grabbed my two quarterbacks. Let's say I would take the best available running back. So I'd start QB, QB, RB, and I'll let the draft go. I've gone, gone ahead and addressed my two QB start, and I'm ready to kind of let the draft come to me the rest of the way, addressing running back, wide receiver, tight end, until I get to the third quarterback conversation, which we'll address later on in today's video. But like I was mentioning, you know, you can find a lot of success doing that from the picks one through four. Now, I think that the same kind of idea can be utilized at the back end of the first round. If you're selecting 10, 11, 12, you could very easily accomplish this because, for example, I'm thinking to myself, am I, if I'm at the back end of the first round and I am specifically worried about not getting two stud quarterbacks, I might as well just address that with my first two picks and hope by the time the draft comes back in the third, fourth rounds that the running backs and wide receivers that are available are going to be great. And I personally think they're going to be, and I'll tell you exactly why. From what I've experienced over the course of the last couple of months drafting in Superflex leagues, the first three rounds typically see 16 quarterbacks come off the board, which means in 30, what, what is it? 36 selections, 16 quarterbacks are taken. That means 20 other positions, which is running back, wide receiver, and tight end are all gone, which at that point, there is still a chance to get a lower end wide receiver one and a lower end RB one, for example, Let's say you, in the first round, you'd start Tom Brady. Second round, you take Russell Wilson. Then you let the draft go down and come back around. And you're taking an RB at 3.12 and a wide receiver at 4.01. I'm perfectly fine going and executing that strategy because I've addressed my positional need in this specific approach of ensuring that you grab two quarterbacks within your first three rounds. Now, in comparison to the other two strategies that I'm going to share uh, later on in today's episode, this is the safest approach. You're going on ahead and you're selecting your two biggest playmakers right away within your first three picks in order for them to help carry your team. Because if you don't, you may be in a little bit of trouble. But like I've mentioned in prior drafts, in prior draft strategy videos, there is not one way to succeed in fantasy football. You can draft any which way you want and find success. And that's the fact. That's why we all love fantasy football. Because regardless of what we do, there's no cookie cutter way to find success. You can do it any which way you prefer. So let's go ahead and let's introduce some of the other strategies I like to utilize in my 2QB Superflex formats. This next one is called the Hero Quarterback Strategy. It is very similar, almost identical, to the concept in which a Hero RB Strategy is. For those of you who aren't familiar with a Hero RB Strategy, we'll probably make a video on it in the coming days. But what it is, is you're selecting one running back in your first like five picks, and you're pretty much stamping, hey, this guy's going to dominate. I'll go ahead and I'll select a running back later, like a Damian Harris, Antonio Gibson, Kenneth Walker that I can steal later in rounds. But I want to go ahead, select one running back, then address the rest of my positional needs, whether it is wide receiver, tight end, quarterback, etc. Now, in this specific circumstance, you would only be taking one quarterback within your first three rounds of a super flex 2QB league. Now, that may leave you a little bit vulnerable, but... Before you commit to this strategy, you have to be comfortable with the idea of selecting your second quarterback between rounds four through seven. Now, the available quarterbacks throughout that span of time aren't going to be as you know talented or produce as much as some other quarterbacks, yet I have still found success in this manner, and I'll tell you exactly why. When you're able to take a quarterback in the first round, then follow it with a you know second round running back and a third round wide receiver, you are guaranteeing yourself a top 12 quarterback a top 12 running back, and a top 12 wide receiver, if not better. Because while all the other teams in your league are ignoring the running back and wide receiver position and hard tunneling for quarterbacks in order to ensure that they have two of the best that they could possibly get, the running back position continues to drop. And though four were selected in the first round, you know, by the time you get to the middle of your second round, you can find a lot of success with drafting players. I'll specifically mention two circumstances that I experienced last season in utilizing this approach. Last year, I was able to draft Kyler Murray with my first round selection, and in the second round, was able to get a late RB1 by the name of Jonathan Taylor. That league went pretty well for me because, yes, even though Kyler did get injured, I was able to grab a low-end RB1 that had incredible upside in my second round and set myself up for success in doing so. Another league in which I had, which was a super flex last season, I started Justin Herbert in my first round, got Austin Eckler in my second. So if in fact you were looking to utilize this hero quarterback strategy, I would personally say 
the best way of going about it is taking that quarterback in the first round. You can certainly ignore quarterback and wait for them in the second round if you want to take a Jonathan Taylor in your first. Totally fine by me, but I per I personally prefer taking a quarterback in my first, getting an RB in my second, a wide receiver in my third, then approaching going forward based on who is available at quarterback in the fourth round and addressing it as such. Now, some of those names that will be available from rounds four through seven at the quarterback position are names like Tua Tunga Vailoa, Justin Fields, Ryan Tannehill, Trevor Lawrence, Jameis Winston, Mac Jones. Again, you have to be comfortable with one of those quarterbacks being your second on roster. If you're not, then you can't really run this strategy. Regardless of the fact that you have a top tier quarterback, running back and wide receiver, if that quarterback that you select out of the group of names that I mentioned isn't an, you know, pulling their weight and contributing enough to your team on a weekly basis, they might not be as valuable as you know, a random PPR wide receiver that's on your bench that could fill that super flex position. And if you're in a two QB league and you have to consistently rely upon that second quarterback every week, you got to ensure that that player is putting up a you know pretty consistent amount of points on a weekly basis. Again, in this specific strategy in which I was able to take Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler last year, I grabbed Teddy Bridgewater way later in the 10th round from the Denver Broncos. He was fine, honestly. You, I was able to survive in that manner, but you have to be comfortable with the idea that that you know, is going to be your survival tactic. That one quarterback that you select way later down the line has to be the difference maker on a weekly basis. Now, if you're looking to commit even harder to the hero quarterback strategy, taking quarterback in the first and following with running back, wide receiver, another running back in the fourth, a wide receiver in the fifth, and just getting so much of an advantage in your primary running back and wide receiver starting positions in comparison to your league mates to the point where the drop off in production is kind of uh, you know the gap is lessened because of that you could very easily draft a quarterback like i mentioned way later down the line you know where other teams are picking their third quarterback you're taking your second you're addressing that by picking a jared goff or a davis mills as your second quarterback and just living with the idea that not only is your primary quarterback going to carry, but those other running back, wide receivers, and tight ends that you selected prior to your second quarterback will also be able to you know, pull their weight and help you win on a weekly basis. Now that we've covered the hero quarterback strategy, let's talk about the final one, which is a zero quarterback start. This offseason, I participated in the Scott Fish Bowl League. It is an incredible charity league. For those of you who haven't checked it out, be sure to do so. In that league, I had the seventh pick of the first round. Um, and I, and I kind of went a little bit crazy. I, I thought to myself, all right, listen, this is a cherry league. I want to have fun with this. Let's see if I can win by ignoring the quarterback position until my fourth round going zero QB and seeing what I can put together in my first three selections. I got Jonathan Taylor, Justin Jefferson, and Deandre Swift. Now I felt pretty comfortable with those three, but what immediately happened is the quarterback position flew off the board. It's a six point per passing touchdown league, minus four points per interception. And there's also the additional hardcore part in which in the Scott Fishbowl League, if a quarterback has less than a 65% passing completion percentage, they lose points for every incompletion. And if they have a higher than 65% passing completion percentage, they gain a point for every completion. So the value of those quarterbacks in those leagues, obviously upscaled to the nth degree. Yet, I thought to myself, you know what? Let me just go ahead. Let's see what I can construct. I started with Taylor, Justin Jefferson, and Swift. I got Mac Jones in my fourth round. That was literally the best available quarterback outside of Trevor Lawrence at the time. Every other quarterback had been completely wiped off the board. Yet, I really do feel like I have two of the top five players in fantasy football with you know JJ and Taylor. And I have Swift that could very easily climb and get into that conversation of being a top tier talent because again while other teams were ignoring running back and wide receiver and going after their quarterbacks regardless of whether it was you know joe burrow or Derek carr they wanted to ensure that they got their studs well i wanted to ensure that i took a positional advantage at running back and wide receiver which i did and in my specific circumstance only time will tell whether or not this is going to succeed or miserably fail i'd probably lean towards the idea that it will fail the reason why i say that is because i took i think the 16th maybe the 17th or 18th quarterback off the board as mac jones okay if mac jones doesn't end up being the 18th best quarterback in this scoring format 
The drop-off in production is so brutal in comparison to the quarterbacks that I could have had. The difference between the number 12 and number 18 quarterback is 50 to 60 points. I would be literally just putting the final nail in my season's coffin if they're not able to produce at their highest level. Now, in order to give you a little bit more context, in that Scott Fishbowl League where I took Jonathan Taylor and Justin Jefferson, if they both end up being the number one players at their given positions, and DeAndre Swift is a top five player at running back, top four, it is all going to pan out pretty well for me. But if they're not able to reach those levels, their differential gap in terms of drop-off in comparison to other teams will not be enough to justify the selection. I'll tell you why. If, for example, Justin Jefferson finishes as the number two uh, wide receiver this upcoming season, maybe he has, you know, 290 fantasy points. You have to take into account that every other team besides me in that specific draft took quarterback relatively early, which meant that all the other wide receivers and running backs were waiting for them in the third round. So they really didn't take that much of a discount at running back and wide receiver. They got lower tier guys in comparison to mine, but they certainly had way more of an advantage at quarterback. But again, just wanted to throw this up on screen. Obviously, you're still relying on the quarterback position just as much as any other team in that league. But you're saying my running backs and wide receivers are going to all put up 20 points a week. And because of that fact, I don't care if my quarterback puts up 15 or puts up 12 in a week. I'll be able to match those numbers that you put up with my running backs because they'll be just as valuable in terms of volatility i mean you, you really are are risking it with this strategy but it depends if you want to go ahead and give it a shot you certainly can i personally find that the hero or you know primary base two qb start is far more advantageous for your team in the long run because the team that i ended up building via scott fishbowl though it does have advantages in specific positions because all my marbles are on the boat that consists of mac jones Jared Goff, and Jacoby Brissett. And if that boat sinks before the season ends, my team will go down with it. All right, now that we've addressed these three primary draft strategies for a 2QB Superflex League, I wanted to mention the final subject being when to select your third and fourth quarterback in a 2QB League. Now, the reason why I put Jared Goff here is because in this specific context, you have to understand that when you are approaching a third quarterback, you have to make sure that they don't have a, a bye week in comparison to your first or second quarterback that is going to obviously conflict. If you have two quarterbacks at the same bye week, do not you know make that your third quarterback. It, it would not make sense in any regard, unless you're just trying to throw that week and say, hey, I'm okay losing that week, and I'll just try to win the, the other 13. Okay, that's fine. That's, a, that's your prerogative if that's what you want to commit to. But the idea of selecting a third quarterback, in my mind, you have to do it. Not only do you have to do it, but you have to make sure that you're selecting a quarterback that will not be replaced regardless of anything happening other than injury. You got to ensure that the quarterback you select, regardless of how many interceptions they throw in a single game, will not be replaced in the following week. So if, for example, you pick Geno Smith, there is a very high likelihood he gets replaced if he plays very bad. There's a very high likelihood that Marcus Mariota could be replaced if he plays really bad for a five-week stretch. I'm talking about quarterbacks like Jared Goff, Davis Mills, that later on in your draft you can make your third quarterback while some teams will want them as their second you can make him your third overall quarterback just to ensure that you not only have your bye weeks filled out with a quarterback that won't be replaced by the time you get to your bye weeks but you'll also have a player that after they've been utilized in filling in for bye weeks can be traded immediately in my primary leagues after my two starting quarterbacks have had their bye week and i'm relatively comfortable with the idea that i'm i'm good to trade my third quarterback i immediately do it I trade it to a team that is desperate for another quarterback, whether it's injury related or is looking for, you know, a, a bye week fill. I'm always willing to trade my third quarterback and that's why I'm drafting them. They play a specific purpose and they can be used to gain value later on in that given season, considering how much value the quarterback position holds in this specific league format. Not only that, you could even go one step further. Draft a fourth quarterback. And what I mean by that is if, in fact, in a draft, I take Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, my first two picks. Later on in the draft, I grab Jared Goff. And then in the final rounds, instead of, you know, picking up an extra running back or a wide receiver for depth, I take Drew Locke in hopes that maybe, just maybe, Geno Smith eventually loses his job five weeks into the season. And the team that was relying on Geno Smith to be their third quarterback 
is now out of a third quarterback. And you have the ability to use that fourth quarterback to whatever liking you want, either filling in for bye weeks or use them as trade bait to trade them to a different team and gain more value. That's how much of a commodity quarterbacks are. They have to be seen as a bargaining chip for future trades when you are making those selections in your draft. That's why they're extremely important. And that's why I keep mentioning the competitiveness of a 2QB Superflex League. Because every selection you make throughout your draft is going to play a big factor as to the entire grand scheme of your season. Now the question is, which strategy will you be using this upcoming season? Hopefully today's content kind of give you an idea as to where you will be potentially going. Whether it's the 2QB start, the hero quarterback strategy, or the zero quarterback strategy that is totally up to you thank you everybody for watching be sure to subscribe click the like button down below comment down below what you guys think how many of you play in super flex leagues if you have not yet participated in one hopefully all the information i've given you has at least kind of convinced you that if you have not yet already convince your league mates to play in a super flex format it will make it that much more uh, entertaining to say the very least. Also, for those of you who haven't checked them out already and are looking to get my fantasy football draft rankings for the 2022 season on a weekly updated basis, go ahead and check out Underdog Fantasy. When you sign up today using promo code Andrew and make your first time deposit, I will personally send you an email with those draft rankings. Otherwise, you can go and check out my rankings via Patreon. You can support their $10 a month or you can make the minimum deposit via Underdog Fantasy at $10. Get a deposit match up to $100. So if you make a $10 deposit, you'll get a match identical. Start off with 20 bucks and go out there drafting some best ball teams and gaining some experience. All right. Thank you everybody for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.